I'm not the star of this intro. The phone is. Do you like these noises? I'm going to show you how to convert one, an older one, into a new VT plug with a conversion kit. There you go. As you can see, it's working perfectly. A lot of BT lines, they'll accept these phones without any problem at all um, for ringing and in. Some are now being replaced with completely digital um, exchanges where it's voice over internet and the old analog phones won't ring out. Um, but in my area, they still ring out, no problem at all. I'm going to demonstrate the old phone it's a long time since I used to do this you used to have to hold the phone with your head Of course, you only use to ring six numbers because internet uh, STD calls, like round the country, cost loads. Uh, that's my mobile. I'm going to put this down. It stopped ringing, so we can ring out without any problem in my area. So that's the working one, and it's working really well. This is the one I'm going to convert. I bought this um, two Sundays ago. I bought the kit last week. There we go. It arrived on the weekend and now I'm going to convert it. I'll reposition the camera so it's pointing down at the table where all these various phones you'll be able to see are um, plonked. That's the best way of putting it because I didn't rearrange them very well. Um, and then we'll uh, convert it with this kit which um, costs under a tenner and is available on eBay. The people who sold me this don't know I'm doing this video it's uh, off my own bat and um, I'll show you how I've done it a few times about half a dozen times with these kits this exact kit. Right that's enough of a preamble we'll get down to top down video well not quite top down because I don't have a boom arm angled downwards video so you can see what's going on. Before we uh, start with the repair or the conversion if you like, um, let me get my phone out of the way, it doesn't have any use now. I thought I'd show you the range of the phones that I've picked up over the last year. Um, these are all under five pounds. Um, I think this one may have been six actually. It may have been five, it may have been six. We'll come to that. So this one is very similar to the one you've just seen. It's not the one you've just seen. Um, it's very similar and it's already converted or at least it has a BT plug. If I can get to the end of the wire. It has a BT plug. There you go. But if you look at the dial, when you dial, it's really slow to come back, which means because it's mechanical, the pulses are dependent on how fast the spring comes back. So that needs taking apart, oiling, and I might be able to get that one working without conversion. This one isn't the one we're converting today, but it looks very similar, doesn't it? Um, it's got a wire with a BT plug on it, so it may have already been converted. But again, um, there's issues with this one. That's broken, only in one place though. It's a bit loose the rest of the places and the dialer is, although it's dialing okay, look at this. From the side you see it better. There's some sort of loose connection between the dialer and the actual phone itself. So that's another thing that has to be repaired rather than converted. Here's a nice business looking one. It has the normal, what used to be screwed onto the wall attachment. The phone line came in here and was screwed on and there's all the phone adapter thing. It's got a brown handset and a sort of grey base. This is dialing. 
but it's stuck. Stuck. It comes back again. I think it's just old age and the fact that it hasn't been oiled. It's got one of the recall buttons because it's business. Um, it doesn't say BT on the bottom or a date, so it makes me think it's not a BT. Um, very similarly, this one. This definitely isn't a BT. This is a GEC. If you look at the bottom, it says GEC on it. And there's a date, but I'm not sure that that's the date. Um, a lot of them have the last two digits, so the last three digits is the year and then the um, month. So if that was 82.7, that might be right, but it's, it's metal. Um, they'd replaced them with plastic on the BT ones by sort of very late 70s, early 80s. And this is a perfect example. This is an 83 model. I know that because it says on the bottom it's an 83, because it's BT. But again, the dialer foot is uh, off kilter. It's stuck, it's sticky, it's, it's working, but you're not meant to do that. You're meant to let it go back on its own. It's sort of going, but if you look at the case, this is why it's catching. The case is all broken, but the base, as I said, is plastic. The date there is 83-2, so February 1983. And this red label means that it was converted at a BT factory to convert it back into use. They were all brought in, converted. This is why it's got a white cable as well, because they didn't care back then. They didn't care about the colors, the aesthetics. If you wanted a converted phone, to be able to use it, you had to get what you get given, because that's the BT way. Anyway, it's plastic. Um, it may well work, but it needs a new case. I might put the red case, if I can't get this working, onto this one, because red's worth more than brown. Brown is, well, let's face it, it's shitty, whereas red is danger. Now this is the one we're going to convert, this is the nice looking, without any scratching on, um, and the dial is working fine, lovely, good speed, it just needs a conversion kit. So I'm going to bring the camera right in, um, I'll turn the, the, um, the phone round, we'll take the handset off, there we go, and we'll work here and you'll be able to see what's going on, but I'll bring the camera in. A little bit closer because I'd rather work here where I can reach it. Okay then here we go this is um, the only tool we'll need is a screwdriver a flat blade one like that and the kit. So we're going to unbox the kit now and um, if you saw my last video you have seen me take the things out of the kit and show them off but we're going to do it again again anyway. There's the empty box and what do you get? You get a new wire in a very very similar color whoops and it's got a BT plug on one end and it has four colored wires with spared terminals Can you see those uh, there you go all four there actually you can only see three can't you Oh, there we go, three, four wires. Different colours with spade terminals. I'll put them to the side like that, so they don't fall off the table. That's what the screwdriver's for. Undoing the phone, undoing the spade terminals, and attaching what needs to be attached. So, what else do you get? You also get some oil, and this is for oiling the uh, dial if it needs it um, you're not meant to put a lot on just a few drops and they give you a little bottle full um, if you can get it open but it was just a matter of breaking the seal so there we are I've broken the seal the oil's ready 
it's one of those anti tamper light, um, lids. What else do you get? You get a new little printed board for put your own phone number on that will go inside the dialer. That's a finishing touch, it's cosmetic really. You may already have the right number on your dialer if it's your own phone you converted. Right, here's two little pieces of circuitry, components. We have a rectifier and a resistor, which we can take the bits off. It's been tinned, it's all very nice. Um, yeah, very professionally done. They've put a little bit of tape on the end of each one to keep it from being damaged, I suppose. And then here is the wiring diagram which is representative of what's inside the phone. Right, we're going to open the phone. It's just a matter of unscrewing it. It's on a little spring, it doesn't have to come all the way out. When you've unsprung it, it should pop off like that. And then we take it off. I haven't been inside this phone, so it's surprisingly clean. Um, that's good. So here we are. This is the phone. Let's just take those components out of the way. This is the phone in all its glory. Great, eh? That's what's inside a BT phone. Isn't it surprising, isn't it? There's the... Uh, the uh, cradle so down with the handset on and then up when you uh, are talking or dialing there's the bells two different tones that's why you get a, a strident sound and here's the the cable we're going to replace so we're going to take this cable off now it's all twisted round underneath the one that we're going to leave on. We're going to leave this one on. This is for the handset. We're going to move that out of the way. We will put it back onto its little cradle. It's this one. It's this one, the one away from the, the handset now. So it's going to be crossed over. And then this one, as you can see, it's rather tangled up. We'll untangle it a little bit and we're going to take off all the tingle, tangled up bits of old cable. We can do that now and then we'll replace with new ones. Uh, so here we go first. We'll take all four off. Oh, there we go. Hasn't moved in a long time. So there's the blue. We'll leave that one up. We may need it again. Green. white there we go and the last one the red there we go don't take that orange one it's part of the dialer so cables off it's gone we'll put the new cable together now Here's the, the new cable. So, first of all, white goes on to the second one along. There's T19 and then white, as you can see. So, we put white onto the one next to T19. 
and we get the screwdriver and we screw it down if we can get the screwdriver to match up to the screw hole right, make sure it's tight that's tight and then we take the red one because that's next on the list red one goes to same as the orange one the one next to T9 so we'll undo that we could put it on T9 because there's no there's nothing to stop you doing that it's a uh, connected to the orange one but we'll put it where the instructions say to put it which is the one next to T9 there we go can you see that tightening up that's this one so next it's blue blue goes on to the fourth one along as you can see so the fourth one along is this one yes no it's showing you that there's nothing connected to that one there is something connected to this one it's the blue okay we'll go with these are all connected together and according to this they don't need to be we're putting a resistor in instead aren't we currently there's three little bits of metal holding it together so we're going to take those apart and we're going to take them out let's just get rid of the lid on this and the other piece of screwdriver bit it's uh, just spinning around so we're going to take those apart and take them out the connectors you can see that there is a connector still in there so we're going to leave that one and there is a connector between T9 and the last one but this one here is the one we're taking off and the one there's, there's a connector here and there's a connector here we're taking those out and we're just leaving this connector So we unscrew all these screws so that they're loose. We're taking this connector out because we're going to replace it with a resistor. Currently it's just a piece of metal, a shim. Well, there's no resistance in this. Let's get rid of it. come out you little there we are it's come out we've got rid of the shim this connector in the middle we're going to leave and we're going to put a resistor between these two this one and this one we'll take this one out because this one's been removed well it looks like we're going to have to put that one out for the moment and this one is coming out by the way I'm filming this from a distance but I'll do close-up it's 1080p so it shouldn't be a problem doing a close-up right we've taken out all three connectors between these four as you can see those four don't have three connectors they have one connector between this one the middle one and the other middle one so we're going to put this shim back in it's a little fiddly it wants to go underneath the screwdriver bits right and also this side of the shim is the blue wire so we're going to get the blue wire and we're going to slip it under 
and I can't show you because my fingers are in the way. I'm going to slip it under and I will get my hand out the way as soon as it starts gripping. There you are. This blue screwdriver, sorry, the blue wire is now underneath this terminal. Nice and tight. Now then, we come to putting the resistor in. This is the wire that goes to the bell. Yes, that's right. And the resistor is going between this wire and this terminal that we just loosened off in order to take out a shim. So we're having a resistor instead of a shim. I mean, when I say a shim, it is literally just a thin piece of metal, very thin, but it will have a lot more current in it than a resistor. So where's that resistor gone? Right, here's the resistor. It was a little bit out of the way. So in order to be able to convert it between this wire and this wire, it's very long, as you can see. What you don't do is chop it off either side. What you do with these is you bend them just a little bit either side like so Can you see that bent and that way if there's any problems with connecting it you'll still have extra wire in order to get it to be right because you need it to be right so currently I'm just arranging the wires so that they will go around a terminal so there you go it's now artistically changed and challenged to go around a terminal so i'm going to push it into that terminal first one first it's not flat enough yet and it's not round enough so there we go a bit round a bit flat suck it into the terminal Brilliant. Bend it around a little bit more with my screwdriver. Come on, bend around a little bit more. It's probably enough and we'll tighten it up without damaging the wire. And then we're going to do the same with the next terminal along because it's the terminal with the wire that goes to the phone. And it says it's purple on that wiring diagram but it's actually blue it's not a big deal purple blue uh, it's all the same to me we're going to take the screw up a bit because it's not fitting underneath up a bit up a bit up a bit right now we can tuck it underneath bend the terminal a little bit not the terminal the end of the resistor round so it's tucked in and we'll keep the wire straight so there we go i've installed the resistor there now we can bend it up a little bit so it's not in the way you can bend it all the way back if you wanted to but there it goes and you can see where it is it's been fitted so we've got that one fitted there. So we're going to move along to the next one and fit the 205 rectifier between T1 and this blue green wire here. So we need to find T1. And you know what? If you look here, it's got a rectifier already attached. But we don't know that the rectifier that's attached is the right frequency or value. Whereas we know this is the one that's been attached, that's been given to us for the kit. 
So I am going to take that old one out because it because it could easily be the wrong um, value. And we know that the one that's been given to us works for the right value. So we're gonna take this one out. There's other wires in the same terminal, gray and red. So we're trying to avoid taking them out when we mash out this thing. It looks like it's been put in. We're gonna take those, those terminals out because it's right down the bottom. There we go. Yeah, it's been wrapped right round the screwdriver, the screw, so that it had a long way to do it and we'll do the same on the next one along not forgetting this red goes back underneath on the first terminal take this one out I think this one's been well and truly put onto the terminals there we go first we're taking it out as I say it may well be fine but we're not going to take any chances Right, so terminal one, these don't have a side, so they can go in either side. I'm going to bend it a little bit, like so. Now we know that this one that we're holding there also has this red wire going in. So we'll put that in, there we go. And we screw it down. And then we're going to make sure it's tight because this doesn't have the length to twist right round the screwdriver, the screw, like these did. It's more of a being clamped in underneath the terminals that are already there. It's nicely tight that though. So we'll do the next one. Uh, we'll take one of these terminals off it. We'll leave that blue one in and we'll put this underneath the screw and we'll put this terminal back in and it'll hold the terminal for this one. Sorry if you can't see it. I really do need to have my finger there to hold it down. But you will see the results. Right, there we go. There's the new rectifier that we put in. The old one may well be fine, but we've put the new one in to be certain. Now we're going to make sure that that terminal there doesn't touch anything. Um, that one doesn't get altered at all. Uh, we've put the shim in on this one that the blue wire goes to. I think we have another wire to finish. We've got the green, and the green goes to um, this one. One, two, three, four, five in. Five in from T19. So, one, two, three, four, five in from T19. There's nothing on it at the moment, which is uh, a little concerning and I've just some, noticed something else as well so we've got the green wire going on to this wire we we'll loosen it off and the reason it's loose already is because the old green wire came off that let's put that underneath there for a second just so that it can access it there we go lovely Okay, and I have noticed that these four are all connected together with shims in this diagram. Well, currently, these two aren't connected together. If you see, they should be all four connected together with shims. And there isn't all four connected together. But we do have one of those little shims. So I'm going to put it in to be certain it's working right. This is the diagram I've been given for 
the new BT regulations. What you've got to remember is these phones are designed so you can have up to four phones on a line and different extensions. They're called REN1. You're allowed up to REN4 volume value of REN4, which is the ring of frequencies the power to ring all four phones is available. And if you don't have these fitted properly, then the frequencies can play about with your internet and broadband. This is why they created the new phones. They don't want them to play around they want them perfectly working fine. Right, just get the screwdriver nice and tight. So now the white is connected to all four of these, which is also connected to the bell ring wire. That's the bell wire, that's the bell wire. This is the dialer wire. I'm gonna make sure the dialer wire is as per our Tight diagram. So currently the dialer wire um, is brown, blue, grey, pink, orange. Um, brown goes to um, here. That's uh, from the T1 to T3. That's correct. Blue goes to T2. Terminal 2. That's correct. Grey goes to terminal one. Uh, yes, there you go, terminal one. Pink goes all the way around to terminal 10. That's pink, it goes all the way around, connects to terminal 10. And orange goes to terminal 18. Sorry, terminal eight. T1, T9, T8. And that's the orange one, so it's all correct for this diagram, which is the one I've been given. Okay, so we'll twist those round as per they were twisted before and slot it into the terminal. We're gonna take our twisted wires from the handset and slot them in on the other terminal there. That's perfect. So that's as it should be. Fingers crossed it's going to work. What we're going to do now is put the back, the the, uh, the cover back on it temporarily. It's easily done. I haven't oiled this one, but it was working fine. And I will do that, assuming it works before it gets sold. No, that's not catching. Let's have another go. It's on a little spring. And obviously, if it's not catching, it's because it's not in the right position. And it's not in the right position. <laughs> so we'll, we'll undo it a little bit. There's a hook at the front and the plastic has to go into the hook and under the metal. That's it. That's done. Now obviously it has to go onto the dialer. Uh, it goes onto the the cradle first. Ah, let's get rid of this. Out of the way. All together. That screw. There we go. Right, now it has to go onto the front here. There's something loose in there as well. It was loose. The screw. The bolts. Oh dear. <laughs> There's a bolt. Let's find out where that's from. Oh. 
and that's not that's not the bolt that's not where the bolt goes it's it's like a brass I don't see where it comes from it might have been loose in there it's not the bell uh, it's not the ringer and you can see the bolts on the ringer so it's not that at all right let's get the hook in it's the hooks in right let's get that over the dial and we'll get these push down ah it was catching here the rubber right so that's in let's put the screwdriver in sorry the screw the screw is a little spring it has a little spring on it <laughs> lets it spring out when you use it and it's fine when you use it from the right way around so you may well have to accept the fact that I can't do this backwards there we go as I said to you the dial is dialing correctly at the moment so here's the moment of truth I've put the extra the new wire on it We'll go and plug it in it's a lot shorter it's a lot shorter than the one on the uh, the cream phone I wonder why maybe why is it at a, at a an expense I don't have an extension cable so you may well have to um, wait until I've repositioned the phone yes it's right at the end of its uh, line now it's sort of hanging we're going to drink it bring it with my uh, mobile um, yeah oh yes hello hello yep So that rings out let's see if it rings in sorry it rings in let's see if it rings out um, put my phone there dial tones working So there we go, converted and working fine for both receiving and um, to making phone calls. So there you have it, it's working. The conversion was a little bit um, longer than I thought it would be, quite honestly. But dial tone's good, the dialing out is good, you've heard it ring, you know it works. Um, yeah, I'm pleased with that. So, we'll give it a quick polish and that'll be up for sale. You can take the old dialing, um, the, the old phone number out and put the new one in. Yeah. In fact, as a full service, we'll, I'll show you. I know where there's some blue tack. So here's the trick with the centre. If you want to take it off, you just put a bit of blue tack in the middle and then pull it and it comes off. There you go. Don't try and leave it off with a screwdriver, you'll damage it. You can take this off, and as you can see, there's a screw there. When I've taken the back the top back off this, I'm going to unscrew this and then oil it with me uh, with me oil. And um, make sure it's just a few drops to make sure it's going to be uh, good forever, or at least another five years. And thanks for watching the video. Um yeah. More small fix-its coming up. You know the um, 
radio I bought last week that's got a really big wide um, I keep going down like this so you can see it it's got a very wide 9 volt adapter for the very wide 9 volt very large 9 volt batteries that cost £7.50 per battery and aren't available as rechargeables so would you rather use a battery or that you can't get hold of and it's really expensive or would you rather convert it so that it can use normal batteries that are a lot cheaper um, I'm going to make a little conversion and I'll show you how it's done um, probably next week um, it's a, this is, it is easier than this <laughs> a lot lot easier than this okay um, yeah the actual adapter thing came the other day I'm gonna have a practice make sure my soldering iron works on it and then I'll do another one to show you how it's e how easy it's done once I know what I'm doing it's not difficult it's just a matter of soldering two bits together and then soldering two more bits together that's it and it will be useful for anybody who picks up um, vintage radios like the one that I got recently right thank you very much for watching I've said that three times now I'm going honestly I'm going I'm gonna go home well not, I am home I'm gonna go over to the desk it feels like that's my home at the moment and edit this video great